The Netherlands, in northern Europe, is best known for its tulips, windmills, and wooden shoes. It's also home to an extraordinary underground world. The St. Petersburg Caves, just outside the city of Maastricht. For centuries, this enormous labyrinth of tunnels has preserved and protected the country, providing resources to help the area grow and providing protection from hostile neighbors. This is what explosions from the French have created. Look, it's massive. Within them, a monstrous discovery was made that would send shockwaves through the religious and scientific communities. All of a sudden, they find this terrifying skull. And when Maastricht became the first Dutch city to fall under Nazi control, how did their covert resistance movement use these tunnels to outwit the invaders? This is like a real bunker. But they were able to send messages to England, to the Allied forces. Nearly a third of the Netherlands sits below sea level, which makes the landscape very flat. And 125 miles south of the capital, Amsterdam, on the border with Belgium, lies Maastricht. With one landmark that stands above them all, Mount St. Peter. On the surface stands an 18th century fort, and beneath it lies an underground world that spans two countries. Chantal Berger knows it well. Under our feet, on 30 meters deep, is one of the biggest cave structures of Holland. The St. Petersburg cave system runs 155 miles. It's made up of two smaller networks, which sit on either side of the national border. The South, or Zonneberg caves, are in Belgium, while the Nord, or North system, is in the Netherlands, under Maastricht and the fort. Chantal leads the way into the northern system. This tunnel is the only entrance and exit that's still available. You'll notice in a few minutes that actually you are in a mine. The bedrock is limestone, two million years old. When the enterprising locals realized that under their feet was a valuable building supply, they took advantage of the opportunity. You need building materials to build all those houses. The law was like if you owned soil on top of the mountain, you also owned everything underneath the mountain. So those farmers were clever and came down in under here and started using chisels and saw to take out blocks out of all these limestone walls. And doing so, they created 20,000 tunnels by taking out one block each a day. What the farmers turned miners couldn't have realized at the time was that within this same system of tunnels would be found a discovery so shocking it would rock the world. They had found something very, very special. By the 1700s, the French were plotting to invade the Netherlands and exploit the local wealth. To protect themselves from invading forces, the Dutch created this fort on top of Mount St. Petersburg, the highest point in the city of Maastricht. Directly underneath lies a series of tunnels used for mining limestone that would create an ideal hiding place from the French. Nevertheless, in 1794, the French managed to make their way into these hidden caves. Once there, they set off explosives underneath the fort in an effort to destroy it and thwart the Dutch forces. If you want to see where it collapsed, have a look. This is what explosions from the French have created, a tremendous area. Unfortunately for the French army, their charges were detonated around 500 feet off target, and the fort remained intact. The tunnels themselves played a crucial role in saving the Dutch fortress. When the French released the explosives into the huge tunnel system, the force was divided into each individual tunnel rather than blasting straight up to damage the fort. The tunnel defense also proved to be an effective offense. The French soldiers were killed by the blast that funneled back at them along these passages. You imagine an explosion like this creating a tremendous power of air. It must have been a tremendous, powerful explosion. With the French in retreat, the limestone mining continued as usual. 
Although the tunnel would face an even harsher enemy come World War II, in the 18th century, there was another seismic event in the Nord Caves. Engineer and scientist Viel Shins has studied the mining history here for more than two decades. The working conditions were very, very bad. It was dark. People had only little light. It was cold, it was humid. It was very dangerous to work here. So just fancy you are here cutting blocks, sawing blocks, and all of a sudden you find this terrifying skull. So it was enormous, it was a huge thing. And they were frightened, these people. The miners had dug up a monstrous skull, nearly seven feet long and three feet wide. They had found something very, very special. Le Grand Animal de Maastricht, the big animal of Maastricht. It was the skull of a Mosasaurus, a long extinct giant sea lizard, nearly 50 feet long. The skull was more than 66 million years old. This huge animal, they had the bite of a T-Rex. They were able to swallow a turtle or a shark in one go. The skull was discovered in 1766. It likely dropped to the seabed millions of years before and was buried by sediment, creating the limestone bedrock which runs under this countryside and which the Dutch miners were slowly digging up. As they were superstitious, they didn't know how to handle it. It was in the early 18th century. Nobody was occupied with fossils or geology or paleontology. The skull was a challenge to centuries of religious teaching. With all of the population reliant upon the Bible to explain their world, this undocumented creature created confusion and even fear. Exerting their power over the Dutch, scientists back in France demanded that the Maastricht skull should be confiscated for them to use as evidence of a new evolutionary story to challenge the religious order. The church was very powerful as a political power, and these French uh, people wanted in a scientific way. They wanted to bring it to France in order to improve their science activity. And for that reason, they brutally confiscated it here from the owner and brought it to Paris. The skull is still in Paris, on display at the Museum of Natural History. The citizens of Maastricht have campaigned for the return of their Mosasaur skull but the French thus far have not complied. This Mosasaur became the very symbol of evolution throughout the world. The very fossil of an animal that proved evolution right. It was amazing that it was found here while people were working underground just to collect blocks. In the folklore of the St. Petersburg caves, the prehistoric Mosasaur lives on. Local artist Jules Sondiker was so gripped by the cave space that in 1900, he turned the monster into a tourist attraction as part of an art installation he helped to create in the Nord Caves. Four generations later, his great-grandnephew, Jean-Jacques Spazus, is a guide here, proud to show off his ancestors' work. This was uh, made in 1900, and it maybe looks more like a crocodile than a mosasaur, but still, it's a very amazing piece of art here. No one had discovered a complete mosasaur skeleton by 1900, so to tantalize the tourists, Sondiker imagined what the body might have looked like. He added feet and legs, not knowing that mosasaurs didn't have them, and swam with fins instead. Sondiker wasn't only a sculptor. These chambers are full of charcoal drawings that he helped to create on areas of rock wall that were specially cut and smoothed for the purpose. He made drawings with charcoal for attracting tourists. They were mostly wealthy people. They could afford to uh, travel in that time. While the Maastricht monster served a scientific purpose, the tunnels here would later face a far more sinister menace, 
when Adolf Hitler rolled out his invasion plans for Europe in World War II. During 1940, Hitler's army invaded and occupied most of Europe, with Maastricht becoming the first Dutch city to be captured in May of that year. Desperate to protect their country's heritage and riches, Dutch officials hid several hundred valuable masterpieces within a vault in the Nord Caves, including the original Night Watch painting by Rembrandt, to keep them safe from the invading Nazis. It was simply hang on those, on those uh, iron things. Without any system, they were layered as many as possible. Rembrandt, a most famous painter, the Night Watch, has one big disadvantage, its size. Nearly 13 feet tall and 16 feet wide, the framed Night Watch masterpiece would not fit through the doors of the vault. But the solution was simple. They took it out of its frame. They rolled it like a simple old carpet, and they used this niche to hide the most precious painting in the world. And that's how they rescued our precious Rembrandt. The Germans were aware of the art treasure trove, but the story goes that they were content to leave the painting safely stored in the vault. They assumed that they would be safe from any Allied bombardment, and the Germans could always move the relics to Berlin at a later date. The Dutch took advantage of the Germans' complacency and hid other items in the vault. And again, the caves proved to be an ingenious defense, this time in the war effort against the Nazis. Can you imagine that behind the carpet Rembrandt, something else was hidden, a radio transmitter? So once in a while, they took out the carpet Rembrandt, picked out the radio and plugged it into the electricity that was installed here. And so they were able to send messages to England, to the Allied forces, whether it was good weather enough to, uh, to fly, to be able to fly. Having been the first Dutch city to be captured in World War II, Maastricht went on to be the first to be liberated. The U.S. Army arrived in September 1944. The St. Petersburg Caves have gone on to be a leading attraction, drawing thousands of tourists every year. It's like diving into a total different world. From the days of protecting limestone miners from invading armies, to preserving masterpieces of art and thwarting the Nazis, this remarkable underground world has played a vital role in the Netherlands for centuries. It's always a mystery to walk in here. It's one massive block of history.